the top 53 Texans free agents targets. Yeah. Um, now, I, first off the top, we're going to go through this, and uh, we're just going to talk about some names that we like. All 53, one at a time. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. every <laughs> single one. We're going to do it in, 50, in, in 30 minutes. No, yeah. we're just going to highlight some of the names that we yeah. like. But I want to start at the top by talking about um, why you didn't include quarterbacks, offensive linemen, and special teamers on this list. Yeah, so th they don't need to spend any free agency time or money or anything on a quarterback situation. They've got Davis Mills still under contract, Case Keenum still under contract. They even added Tim Boyle at the end of last year, signed him to reserve contract. So they got four QBs. So they don't need to spend any time on that. They don't need to spend any draft capital on that. Um, offensive linemen. Now, that was controversial. I heard a lot, got a lot of feedback about that. It's like, hey, don't spend any free agency money on offensive linemen. Look, three spots are already locked up. Larry Tunsil's your left tackle. Titus Howard's your right tackle. And Shaq Mason's your right guard. And then Drew Scruggs is going to fill center or left guard. So whatever he doesn't fill, it's up to Jarrett Patterson, Kenyon Green, oh, Kendrick man. Green. Like, there's, there's options in-house to figure out that interior offensive line spot that's not occupied by Scruggs. So don't spend free agency money on that. Like, I don't want them to go spend a whole bunch of money. Like, is there an offensive lineman in free agency that I'm sure could be like a depth piece or like a swing tackle? Look, they need a swing tackle. Sure, there's a guy like that. But he's not one of the top 53 guys that I'm going to pay attention to in free agency. Touche. I think my gut is depth on offensive line because I want to protect C.J. Stroud sure. at all costs. If we're not spending free agency money on that, do you think they spend any draft capital on that at all? I mean, look, the, with the Patterson selection late last year having so much success when he was sort of forced into playing, um, I could certainly see where maybe a late draft pick, um, they use it and ha have that guy sort of build into it. They've also got a couple of guys hanging around that just didn't play Last year, Nick Broker is a guy that was on the roster all year long and just didn't play. He's a backup offensive lineman, interior guy. They got to find a swing guy because George Fant's not coming back. George Fant's not coming back. He's going to go start somewhere. Yeah, he like outplayed he, his his, his uh, contract. Yeah, I mean, Fant sure. was like an afterthought in free agency, and they snag him. He has to play most of the year because of Titus' injuries. And so Fant's going to go start somewhere. And even if he doesn't start somewhere, I think you're, you're probably priced out of bringing George Fant back. Charlie Heck's a free agent. You want to bring Charlie Heck back? Sure. I mean, Charlie Heck had one of the worst, <laughs> one of the worst like half games I've ever seen yeah, a guy I'm, play. I'm good on the Charlie back end of the Heck. season. So it's like the investment. There's so many other things that you could spend money on. So under the radar, you know, cheap investment because you've got options in the building. That's yeah. the biggest thing. If the, if there if Juice Scruggs had looked bad last year, I'd be pounding this table yes. for an interior offensive and, line. And the fact you mentioned Kenyon Green. Kenyon Green, I think if he if we could get any production from him next year, I think we're we're set for the future at the offensive line. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, you could have the five spots locked up for 2-3 years if Kenyon Green plays well or if Patterson comes back and sort of solidifies his interior spot and then Scruggs takes the other one like you could have five guys that you're comfortable going into at least a couple of years worth before you start worrying about okay do we pay Tunsil again does Titus Howard get paid yada 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 you could have it all solidified that's why there's no offensive line got it don't got spend it. time worrying about that plus it's boring talking about offensive line. <laughs> it's way more fun talking about running backs, and I, wide receivers, and pass rushers. And stuff I like wholeheartedly that. agree. So that being said, at the top, so let's start off. The first column you wrote, um, you have running backs. I'll just yep. rattle them off real quick, and we'll talk about some of the ones that we like. Uh, Cody lists Derrick Henry, DeAndre Swift, Tony Pollard, Saquon Barkley, Gus Edwards, Josh Jacobs, Zach Moss, Austin Eckler, and Antonio Gibson. So, Clancy, of those names – which ones of those do, do stick out for you, or do you even <clears throat> do you even necessarily even want a, a running back in free agency? Don't disappoint me. Don't say something silly now. This <laughs> is a tricky situation because we see with the league, too, that the consensus now is you draft a replacement. You don't pay to have a guy come in. So Devin Singletary having the year that he had, I think he's probably going to warrant big money that I don't know that I would pay him. Yeah. Damian Pierce is still probably your RB2. I don't see a scenario where they would bump him up to RB1 and just give him the reins maybe again without a compliment. Um, so naturally, the business side of me starts to think about money. Derrick yeah. Henry is going to require a lot of money. I don't know that I would pay him. He's kind of – he's taking his beatings. He's probably towards the twilight of his career. DeAndre Swift, got a big injury history. Tony Pollard. Real disappointing as a top back. Yeah. Real disappointing. And the Texans fans in me doesn't want Dallas's. <laughs> okay. Like, That's fair. The leftovers. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. That, was, that must have been tough for you last year with Schultz and Noah Brown, huh? 
Yeah, <laughs> especially when no no like, ground rattles off like <laughs> one like yeah, it's yeah, 185 yards or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, well he I'll never, give CJ Stroud the credit for that. Yeah, he never did that with Dallas. He right. never did that with Dallas. Right. So Saquon, I think, is probably the most appealing name there, but yeah. there's the injury risk that goes with that, and because he is the name, he's going to command the money. Sure. So with the kind of system Houston runs, he's so versatile that I think it could be a fit, and I understand we have a lot of cap space. I don't know that I would pay him still. Sure. And I think you get the same kind of result. Austin Eckler's the same type of back as well. And um, I mean, worrying about money is certainly – Yes. A wor it's a worthwhile worry. I understand it because you've got, as you look at the situation now, before they bring back any other guys, you've got a starting cornerback spot that's open. You've got a starting defensive end spot that's open. You've got a starting defensive tackle spot that's open. And the Chiefs go there to the Super Bowl, and they didn't allow more than 28 points all year. And so you're thinking, it's kind of crazy to be spending money on a running back. I mean, they had Isaiah Pacheco, who's a seventh-round yeah. pick. Um, and then you look at the other side, and you're like, oh, San Francisco's offense got transformed because they had a big investment in running back right. in Christian McCaffrey. And, like, I, it's, it's so funny how just a little bit of production can change sort of your view on a guy. You know, Saquon Barkley's played more games over the past three seasons than Christian McCaffrey. Wow. But people, but the, he's played more games than Derrick Henry over the past three seasons. Man, His injury was in 2020. Was, okay. Okay? So, I mean, Barkley's played a lot. It's so, like I understand sort of the – like the conversation about durability, and like he's look, he's left some games early, okay. which which is which sort of affects the durability in the conversation. But you know, spending on a running back, it's of, of any time to do it. It's when your quarterback's got a rookie. That's contract. exactly how I feel so about it, it. It's a it's is it a necessity? Probably not. Is it a luxury that you can afford? I feel like that's where they are. And a lot of the names you mentioned are kind of. Hey, I want this guy in a tandem with another guy. Yeah, so like, that's you know. why the name I wanted to highlight here was Antonio Gibson, because along those same lines, I think he's not going to be someone that's going to command a massive contract. Right. But if you remember his rookie year with Washington, he really burst onto the scene, had a thousand yards as a rookie. Well, I, I mainly remember that because I did have him in fantasy that year. Mr. Fantasy. Mr. Fantasy, got to get the drop. At your course. service, at your service. Um, but Antonio Gibson, I think, you know, coming out of Memphis, I think he's a guy – that I've always just liked. I think he, yeah. he didn't really always get a fair shake, I felt, with Washington, and especially the quarterbacks he was playing with, just a bunch of hot garbage. Those offenses aren't going to be good for anybody. Put him in a tandem with Devin Singletary, with Damian Pierce. I think you have a running back room that's pretty strong, and to Clancy's point, he's not going to cost a lot. Yeah, if, if, if there's, there's a couple guys on that list that if you're bringing that guy in, I want Devin Singletary back with him. And okay. I think Antonio Gibson's probably the, the guy that I think about the most. It's like, hey, if your running back room is Gibson and Devin Singletary, Damian Pierce for whatever he brings to the table. Maybe they draft say, a guy. And then like a late round pick. rookie or mid round rookie. Yeah. Like I, you can start selling me on that being a pretty solid running back room for the next couple of seasons. Yep. All right. I Mo agree. Moving on to wide receivers. Let's rattle off these Ooh, names. There's some names on here, man. And these are the fun ones. These are the pass catchers. This is we start thinking about CJ Stroud to blank. So let's rattle these off. Cody has Mike Evans, Michael Pittman, Calvin Ridley, Gabe Davis, T. Higgins, Curtis Samuel, Josh Reynolds, Hollywood Brown, Darnell Mooney, and Cedric Wilson. Now, before we get into these, um, I do I should just point out this was sent before the T. Higgins yeah. uh, franchise tag news came I, out there earlier I, this week. I feel pretty strongly he's going to get franchise tagged just because it, it gives Cincinnati that one opportunity to give you know one more year with him and Chase and a healthy Burrow, so I feel I feel pretty good that he's going to get franchise tagged. If he does get tagged, you could still pursue him. It just gets a little bit more expensive because you got to trade for him. Sure. Um, I probably would stay totally away if he gets tagged. Yeah. I, I don't even want to enter into conversations, be trading draft picks for him. I agree. Stuff like that. And if he hits true free agency, then you can have a conversation about exactly how T Higgins fits. But most of those other names are probably worth talking about because Higgins seems more than likely headed back to the bank. Yeah, I'm with you. Clancy, what name sticks out to you from that list? I guess before you go down the list, though, recap what's already in-house and what's staying. Tank right. Dell is here. Nico Collins is here. No, Noah Brown's a free agent. So it's, so it's, it's a Tenuous situation with wide receiver because you don't want to feel like you're comfortable there if you're the Texans, but you've already got five guys signed right. for next season. You know, Nico's going in the last year of his deal. Tank's in the second year of his rookie deal. Robert Woods is in the second year of his two-year deal. And then John Mechie's going to go into year three of his rookie deal, and Xavier Hutchinson is going to be year two of his deal. But you didn't see a lot out of Mechie. You didn't see a lot out of Hutchinson. And you save – over five million bucks if you move on from Robert Woods. Oh, so yeah. now you start thinking about, okay, well, who can I bring in 
to fit with Nico Collins and Tank Dell if you're the Texans front office and if you're Bobby Slowick. And so it just feels to me like it's a position you should pursue somebody. Maybe it's a star to go with those guys. Maybe it's a guy that fits in there with those guys. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's this year's Robert Woods. I don't. It feels like somebody should be added there. Yeah, I agree. Clancy, what are you thinking? The business mind of me takes over a little bit because I'm sitting here going, okay, keep in mind, you're going to have to give C.J. Stroud whatever he wants in, what, sure. four years? Yeah. So I think the perfect fit for it, and I'm being a homer when I say it, you can sign Mike Evans to a three, four-year deal. Let's go. Bring in a guy that knows how to win, yes. veteran presence, still pulling down 1,000-yard seasons, teach the young guys something. Yep. I think he would fit like a glove. Mr. Consistency, 1,000 yards every year. He's been every in the NFL, 10-year career, and you talked about it. A bunch of different success with a bunch of different quarterbacks. We know he'd have success with C.J. Stroud. Like, that's easy. It's just, I, when you talk about Mike Evans, he's got every reason to walk into free agency and ask for $25 million a year. Yep. I mean, Ooh, the I even saw one rumor talk about Ooh. 30. Yeah, he could get up to 30 because the cap's jumping. I mean, he, ha he can ask for it. His average season – would be most wide receivers' best season of their career. That's his average, factoring in everything that he's dealt with in his career, all 10 years, average, would be most guys' best season. Mm -hmm. So that's where it gets really pricey. And then you definitely, you know, investment in running back, you don't price yourself out of a big-time defensive end or corner or a linebacker or something like that. But you sign Mike Evans, you do price yourself out of a lot of different big-name guys over on defense or at other positions. But I look... Mike Evans on one side, Nico Collins on the other, Tank Dell across the middle, yep. out of the slot. I mean, you start talking about one of the best offenses in football. Absolutely. So. My name on this list, though, um, I, I think Mike Evans is my top name also. But I do want to mention another name. Um, Hollywood Brown, for me, fits the mold of what I think this offense is missing. I think we got the big body receiver, Nico Collins. You got the slot guy, Shifty, with Tank Dell. We need a burner. burner. We yep. need a burner that can take the top off the yep. defense, kind of like how we had Hopkins and Will Fuller for several years with Watson. We kind of, I would like to see us replicate that with a Hollywood Brown. He can get deep, and I don't think he's going to cost as much sure. as Mike Evans. My question with Hollywood Brown is, are you getting Hollywood Brown, or are you getting what I like to refer to him as when he was in Arizona, a Scottsdale Brown, <laughs> where it's like, eh, it's not quite that good. Yeah. It's not quite what we saw. Um, look, you talk about the, the the scheme fit, just having that guy that puts a lot of pressure on defenses getting deep, in addition to the fact that Nico can do that as well and so can Tank, and it's like now you start letting Bobby Slowick play chess yes. while defenses are trying to play checkers because he can move guys around, inside, outside, all those various things. Uh, Holly, I mean, he got to rename him, though. He got to be H Town Brown. <laughs> That's right. If he comes to, it sounds if he comes good. To Houston, That's not oh. bad. That sounds good. Exactly. It works. H Town Brown, Hollywood Brown, no, uh, Hollywood H Town Brown. Yeah, there and, we go. and let's not forget, this is a guy that not too long ago was traded for a first round pick in yes. the draft. So yep. that that kind of quality of play should still be there uh, for me. So uh, let's move on to tight ends. Um, obviously, let's not. Let's not. <laughs> let's not. Let's not. I don't love these tight ends. Hey, man. well, I think you you mentioned in your article that um, we we strongly believe and uh, you strongly believe that they're going to bring back Dalton Schultz. Yes. I hope they do as well. But if they do let him walk, there are some names here that are a little interesting: Hunter Henry, Noah Fant, uh, Gerald uh, Everett, Mike Gesicki. I'll say this: uh, as an avid Madden player. Noah Fant is a very fun player to play with in yeah. Madden. He, he has the speed rating <laughs> through the roof. So just for, selfishly, I like to play as the Texans. Sure. I wouldn't mind us signing Noah Fant, but that's not a football reason. That's yeah, a fan no. reason. Yeah, the, I, I don't love the tight end free agency class. Hunter Henry is basically the only guy I actually kind of like from this. Um, they, I, I just don't – there's nobody that's close to Schultz. He hits free agency, true free agency, then they are going to be in a bidding war with a lot of teams that want to add – a big time tight end like Schultz. And look, he's not Mark Andrews, Sam Laporta, Travis Kelsey. He's not those guys, but those guys aren't available. So, like, you can't go get those guys. Right. Schultz is the best tight end that's actually available that could potentially be moving teams. So, don't let that guy hit free agency. Don't let him get out there. I'd like to see him, you know, maybe it's a two year investment, maybe it's a three year investment. You got the cash. We've talked about this. You know, if you got to get into the nine, ten, eleven million dollars a year with him, certainly it's it's an area you may need to go. But he was I, on the for, books for nine last year, correct? Yeah, yeah, something so, like that. You know, I mean, he's not getting 
You know, you're not getting him for less after the production. Right. You know, he's one of the most productive tight ends in football in the past four seasons. Yes. So, you know, it just I don't let, don't let him go. Hunter Henry's solid, but he's not as good. And you can't trust a rookie there. Yeah. You, like that's there's some of these positions where you just draft a rookie and drop them there. But you can't do that at tight end. Not yeah. For me. Rookies rookies always take some time to adjust yeah. at the tight end spot. So, um, Clancy, anything to wrap up tight ends? No, not really. Other than that, there's a piece of me that just again conscious on the money i know what he's going to command after the season he had sure cj stroud utilized him perfectly i think he was the emergency outlet when needed just constant positive yards if you're looking for the bargain i kind of like what cody said of hunter henry coming in house because i still think he fits that kind of archetype injury history you can probably get him for a bargain but I, the smart move is to keep Dalton. Schultz. Stroud loves Schultz too, and just hearing him talk, he was on the pivot and he was talking about some of the different impressive offensive moments throughout the course of the season. And he, it was, uh, it was Cincinnati in overtime, and he talked about how Dalton Schultz, without being able to hear what the check was, Schultz just kind of knew what CJ was asking for, and adjusted his route they were able to hit him over the middle and sets him up in overtime then he talked about the tampa game where schultz just watching how cj called the play and made the checks schultz took his route like a little bit deeper than he was supposed to in the way that it's actually designed because he knew what cj was looking for and it opened something up for tank dell and i'm just like is, is Hunter Henry going to build that? I mean, a rookie's not going to know yeah. that. Like, that's Smart's that's five it. years into the NFL, Dalton Schultz, six years in the NFL, Dalton Schultz, that is able to know those things. So Stroud really likes him. I'd, I'd bring him back. I, I, I really would. I agree. All right, moving on to the defensive side. And what's interesting about this is every single defensive position is listed here. I think I would agree yep. with you, Cody, that like the defense needs work all the way from the top to the bottom. So let's start off. On the edges, we have Brian Burns, Chase Young, Josh Allen, and that's Jacksonville Josh Allen. Right. Jadavian Clowney, Danielle Hunter, Zadarius Smith, and Bryce Huff. Jet Boyer's boy, Bryce Huff, I should mention. Um, Clancy, of those names, any jump out for you? The one that is absolutely a hell no is Jadavion Clowney. <laughs> Just really? based off the history, the age with the two, I want somebody I can invest multiple years in. And I okay. think J. Davion Clowney at this point is just a gun for hire. That's a one-year deal guy probably to a contender that needs to bridge a gap. I, so I, I agree with you, but I feel like if you if you didn't re-sign Jonathan Grenard and you're chasing one of these other big dogs and they end up going to another team, you could do a lot worse than just falling into Clowney for one year. I understand right. the reservations. Right. A guy taking naps before practice, not ready to go. Right. That's when Bill O'Brien was the coach. I mean, you got, you got I wouldn't want to do that either under you, Bill O'Brien. You got D'Amico Ryan's motivating Jadavian Clowney. I could see a Ravens like you're one of his best seasons in the NFL this past year. Run stopping. He had some of the sack success that he hasn't consistently had over his career. I mean, you could do worse. He's not a priority. But if you end up with Jadavian Clowney, you could do a whole lot worse. Yeah. And I don't think my thing with that is uh, you mentioned in your article about how um, this is all these names are for not if they re-sign Jonathan Grenard. Do you have an idea about what he's going to be commanding? Well, that, that's, a, that's a fun conversation with Grenard because it's one really good year yeah. in his career. It's got He's got one maybe year. Like maybe it was going to be a good year, but you got hurt. In Some the flashes the year. throughout his career. Some flashes, but if you're Grenard and you're his agent, you're talking about a conversation where you're saying, hey, what you saw in 2023 is just the beginning. Like he's going to be – a much better player than what you saw in 2023. And if that's the case, then you're talking about an 18, 19, 20 million dollar a year pass rusher. Mm. But if you're building in some, hey, we think that's kind of your best version of you, then you're looking at the 13 to 16 million dollar range. And you can sort of, I, I feel like it's going to be a three year investment just, okay. just to time it out with some of these other big contracts that might come off the books at the right time or when you can extend him if he plays well in the first couple of years of that deal. So I feel like it's going to be kind of a three-year investment, 14 to $16 million. And if you get the version of John Grenard you had this year, next year at that price, you're going to be pretty happy with it. Absolutely. You're going to be sure. pretty happy with it. You'll live with it. It's way better than spending, say, 20 plus on a guy like Brian Burns because he's got a little bit longer track record and he's coming off of being a first round pick um you know it, it, it's a lot better to spend that on Grenard than to get that from Burns and get kind of the same production yeah as well you know you have that play with there but um I I think they're going to try for Grenard but I do wonder if maybe just the the his his hope is going to be higher than what the Texans initially are offering 
Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with, with Grenard. Uh, one thing, me, me and Clem did a video, um, and we were kind of talking. One name that you have on your list is Chase Young, and we kind of talked about how if he's motivated, and yep. we saw it, you know, we saw spurts where he was taking plays off in the playoffs, which is concerning. Yeah. But he, I saw a very motivated Chase Young in the Super Bowl. Sure. Now, if, he, if he, that's the only game he gets up for, that's, that's concerning. But nonetheless, when he is motivated, he looks good. So – if Grenard were to walk and we could look at Chase Young on a one-year prove-it type of I'm deal. Out. I'm totally out on Chase Young. Totally I, out? It just, okay. It kinda, right. it, it, he feels like the type of guy that two years in, you're going to be looking at him and be like, they paid him how much? And we're getting that? Like it, it, Not even on a one-year prove-it type deal? I don't think he's taking a one-year prove-it deal. Mm. I think there's somebody out okay. there that's given him that multi-year commitment. I agree. And if he, w if he wouldn't take the one-year prove-it deal, that would concern me even more. I'd be even more like – Hold on, you don't want to go and prove it a little bit more than what you've already put on the table? Right. I, I'm, I'm totally out on Chase Young. Yeah, I, I'd, sp I'd spend money elsewhere. I, I agree with you. If, if it's multiple years, I'm totally out. I'm totally out. I would only want him if he would be willing to take that, but I think you're, you're probably right yeah. on that. All right, moving on to defensive tackles. Sure. And I'm going to go ahead and spoil this. You this is where I'm writing the blank check for the first name on your list, yep. Chris Jones, but we also have Justin Matabuike, Leonard Williams, DJ Reader, former Texan, Javon Kinlaw, Christian Wilkins, Fletcher Cox, and Grover Stewart of the Falcons. Clancy? Colts. I, oh, he's the Colts. Yeah, Sorry, Grover Colts. Colts, yeah. I understand the allure of Chris Jones. Chris Jones has been very vocal about wanting to stay in Kansas City, though. Yep. Like, reading articles, he loves Steve Spagnola. He, money, money talks, baby. Yeah. A, and his agent tweeted that same day of the parade. He said, hey, take these mic, take the mic away from these players. His, his agent was like, hey, relax, buddy. We haven't gotten paid yet. We need to get paid. You may, you may be right in that he may never actually hit free agency because the Chiefs right. may show up with, with the big bag of money. If he hits true free agency, guys like Chris Jones don't actually hit true free agency. Like, it never happens. Like, big time – pass rushers, especially interior guys, they don't hit free agency. More sacks in the regular season over the past four seasons than Aaron Donald. And when you add in wow. playoffs, he's only a half a sack behind Aaron Donald over the past four years. He is almost as good as Aaron Donald was in his peak, and that guy didn't hit free agency. If you get him, if you get the shot at him, you've got to take the swing. Yeah, it starts in the trenches. The Winning starts in the trenches in, yes. in the NFL, and Chris Jones co completely transforms what I felt was their biggest weakness on defense was the front seven, and it turns it in – it just completely transforms it into a strength just by adding Chris yeah. Jones. That's why I'm giving him a blank check. Uh, you put whatever dollar sign you want on that, and you you come to Houston. It's, it's probably the third biggest – contract on an average salary for a defensive player like i mean he come he checks in he probably checks in above miles garrett and below aaron donald so it's expensive but he's he's worth every penny i promise you he's worth every penny he's very good mm -hmm. so in a hypothetical world if chris jones resigns with kansas city mm -hmm. i like a name like like fletcher cox yep because i think still productive still productive veteran presence has been on winning teams has has like a ranch out in middle texas somewhere so it's playing close to home there's a little bit of that positivity to it so you may get a little bit of a bargain i still like the idea of them addressing defensive tackle in the draft as well yeah mm. so, a few, more than a few options right? yes so i think a guy like fletcher cox in-house to kind of set an example for that guy someone good for a, a rookie to model i think that's the guy yeah. as well so assuming it, i'm with you i understand the appeal of chris jones but if that ain't happening that's my pick if 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 cox hits free agency and wants to leave i'd give him a i'd give him a shot sure and then matabike the baltimore ravens guy yeah 13 sacks this past season absolute monster um didn't face a lot of double teams which is maybe a little concerning because he should see some double teams but at the same time i'm thinking to myself oh, okay you're going to double team him and then it's going to be Malik Collins, Will Anderson, and whoever you spend maybe the 23rd overall pick on, all getting you know one-on-one -on -one action. That's fine. I'll yeah. live with that. I'll live with Will Anderson getting uh, a one-on-one -on -one matchup every week because Matt Abike is getting double teamed. I'll live mm -hmm. with that. I'm with you. All right, so we are getting close on time. So let's let's power through these linebackers real quick. We got Patrick Queen, Devin White, Frankie Louvu, Josie Jewell, Aziz Al Shair, and Jordan Brooks. I'll go ahead and just mention the name I see on this list that jumps out is Aziz Al Shair. I know there was interest with him last off season. He's from D'Amico Ryan's 49ers defense. Yep. He makes a lot of sense. I think he would be a great partner with Christian Harris in the middle. Um, Clancy, what do you think on those names? Not much of an opinion. Uh, it's 
the name itself past that. I think Devin White's a little bit older. Um, Proven winner. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't do a whole lot for me. Patrick Queen, I think, coming out of the Baltimore defense, I think anybody should be excited to have him. I'll take it. But I like your thought process for all year. Louvu was a nightmare against the Texans. You know, feels like he basically won the game for the Panthers um, when they played this past season. Uh, that's I mean, and little do it all action coverage, run stuffer. I, I like him. Could be expensive. Um, I kind of feel like this is probably a middle of the road investment with some rookie backing up Christian Harris to Otoa as a backup. So yeah, I, I don't see a ton of investment in linebacker, but yeah, you know, I've been surprised before. Yeah, I definitely think they need to do something because I, I wasn't too impressed with the play of Denzel Perriman last year. I think there was times yeah. I definitely struggled in coverage for sure. Um, but I think there's definitely room to improve from Denzel Perriman's level of production that he gave us last year. Sure. Um, f- wrapping it up, we'll just we'll do cornerbacks and safeties together. We got Legereus Sneed, Jalen Johnson, Kendall Fuller, uh, Stephon Gilmore, uh, Chidobia Wuze uh, at corner. And in safeties, we got Antoine Winfield, Cameron Curl, Geno Stone, and Kyle Duggar. So to note on that, I believe Tampa Bay announced the intention to use the franchise tag on Winfield. Okay. Does that sound right? Yeah, if he, hit, if he hits true free agency, you take a swing. If not, then eh, you, you, you keep moving down the list. Um, I don't know exactly what they're going to do at safety. It, are they adding a guy that's going to start, which means either Jimmy Ward goes to the bench or Jalen Petrie goes to the bench, or are they adding a guy that's kind of a depth piece? There's not a lot of depth pieces in there. There's only a handful of names. Right. Those are guys that probably would come in and start. And then from the corner spot, again, if you've invested elsewhere – say defensive line and running back and maybe a wide receiver, you maybe run out of money to go out there and find a, you know, expensive starter opposite Derek Stingley. So that's where the 23rd overall pick mm-hmm. comes in play. Deep cornerback class. Um, they've talked to a bunch of different guys at the Senior Bowl, including Quinion Mitchell, who's one of my favorites from Toledo. Um, Kalen King from uh, Penn State's a name that's kind of a mid-round guy. And maybe you don't want to start him right away, but he's ready maybe in a year. So then you go um, like Stephon Gilmore for a year or bring a Nelson back for one or two years. So cornerback's tough because those guys are either old, injury-prone, or expensive. Yeah. And, and it, there's not like a – there's not a Chris Jones. There's not a Matt Abike. Like there's not one of those for cornerback. Um, it's just kind of like a lot of – there's some red flags with some of those cornerbacks. Yeah, I think the, the guy for me um, is the guy that we ha- don't have here because he is a pending free agent. That's St- Steven Nelson. Yeah, bring him back. Um, I think bring him back. He's not the same burnt toast meme that he was when he was a Steeler. <laughs> right. he has, his play is drastically improved. And I think what I saw last year of the Texans defense, like I said, for me, it's the, it was the front seven. I saw that secondary play great football for a lot of the year. And if you bring that group back and you improve the front seven, I think it trickles down. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, safety gets a little bit better, makes the cornerback's job a little bit easier. Uh, I think some of the burns from Nelson this past season were maybe on the safeties a little bit. So I, I, I like Nelson. I like Nelson. All right. Well, this was a great panel, guys. So, again, before we pass on over to Tyler, make sure you are subscribed to Cody Stutz's Houston football website. It is great, great stuff. Just throw it in the Google machine. You'll find me. Cody Stutz, Houston football. Boom, you're there. 